Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired. And in the previous ARM tutorial, we created our own ARM assembly program from scratch, where we returned our own custom exit code to the program. We used the move immediate as well as the software interrupt instructions in order to perform this. In this video, we're going to be adding a few new ARM instructions under our belt, focusing on the add, sub, and mull instructions for their immediate and register options, as well as how we can modify the mnemonic of those instructions to optionally set the CPSR register. We'll also talk about what exactly is the CPSR register and why do we care. So let's dive right into it. I'm going to be staying in CPU later today because I would like to see all of the different values of the registers as we're stepping through this program and adding these new instructions. But you can feel free to follow along inside of your VM or using QueenU or anything of your choice. So let's just dive right into our very first instruction. First of all, we're going to take a look at the add immediate instruction. So you might remember the move immediate instruction that took a register as well as an immediate or constant value. And this is very similar to that, except it's going to be having an additional register that's going to be our destination. So what's going to happen here is it's actually going to take the first operand right here, as well as the constant value add these two values together and then store their result inside of this destination register. So if we scroll down here in the documentation, you can see RD is always going to be the destination register. Then RN is going to be the first operand for this instruction, as well as, of course, the constant. So let's try this out and see what this looks like to code. I'm just going to copy this line so that we can see exactly what we're doing while we're using this. And I'll put this in as a comment over here. So we'll copy this in. So first of all, we need to have a register that's going to be added to our constant value. So let's use our move immediate instruction that we learned in the previous tutorial to set up one of our general purpose registers with a value of our choice. So let's do move and then we're going to have the destination register where we want to put the value. I'm just going to pick on the R0 register. Remember R0 through R6, these are our general purpose registers. So let's just use these as temporary storage locations while we're performing these instructions. So move R0 as the destination. Remember pound sign to signify that this is an immediate or constant value. And let's just pick the number four. So this is going to be our first operand right here. And now we're pretty much good to go to start coding the rest of this instruction. So let's take our mnemonic. We're going to do add and I'll get into what the S means in a little bit. And we need to choose a destination register that this result is going to be stored in. So let's just pick on R1. So do R1, it's going to be our destination. Then our first operand is going to be our register, R0 right here that holds the number four. So we're going to say R0. And now let's pick another immediate value to add. So I'm going to pick the number three. And let me fix my spacing right here. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the immediate value three, add it to the value in R0, which is currently four, and store this into R1. So optionally, if you wanted to just rewrite this, this is just a comment. You could write this as R1 equals R0 plus three. If you were writing this in, for example, C or C++, this would be the equivalent. So without further ado, let's just run this and actually watch this happen. I'm going to do compile and load. And let's start stepping over. So we can see R0 now has the immediate value four, which we expect. Now let's do our add instruction. Step over. And exactly what we expected. We can see that the value seven is now stored in R1, which was our destination register. So this means that R0, which contained four, and the immediate value three were added and stored into this destination register. 
So that was an example for using the add immediate instruction, but let's look at another version that we can use this instruction for. So this is actually going to be adding two registers instead of an immediate value and a register. So what we have here, we still have our destination register, but we have our first operand, same thing using rn, and then we have another operand, rm, it's going to be a secondary register, and we're going to do the same thing, add this value and this value, and store it into our destination right here. So let's just go through and watch this happen. So I'm going to remove this since this isn't correct anymore. And let's add another constant inside of another instruction, inside of a register. So let's pick on R2, R2, and let's just move the value. I want to choose something different. So I'm going to pick two. And so now two is going to be into our R2 register, but we also need to update this instruction if we want to add the registers. Copy this, replace this with R2. So now what we do is we expect that R1 is going to hold the value of six, which is the addition of these two registers. So let's try running this and just see what it looks like. I'm going to reset my registers over here just to make sure you're following along. Okay and let's compile and load load up our first register with the value four second register with the value two and now let's add these two together put them inside of r1 there we go now it's got six very simple and i hope that makes sense so just like we added um these two registers inside of, using the add instruction if we go over here and we look at the move instruction, which we learned in the last video, you can actually do the same thing where if you wanted to move one register value into another register value, you can totally do that. And all you would need to do is change this value to a register. I won't demonstrate it since hopefully it makes sense after seeing the add instruction. Let's move on to our next new instruction. We're going to be looking at the sub instruction. So if you understood add, sub, probably is going to make a lot of sense. All it's going to be doing is it's going to be taking this value and it's going to be subtracting this value from that and then putting the result into the destination register. So that is very similar to the add instruction. So I'll just copy this over. Actually, we're going to be looking at this one, not the one where it's going to change the CPSR register. And let's take this Add a new comment. Here's what we want to do now. I'll just leave these numbers. These are fine. And we could optionally do this as an immediate instruction, like we did for the add instruction, but I'm just going to show you an example using the registers. So we'll do sub. And just as a note, you can do capital letters or lowercase letters for your mnemonic here. So this is the mnemonic. I like to use lowercase letters just because maybe it's easier to type. So they mean the same thing though. Okay, so let's pick our destination register. We'll choose R1 again. And we pick the bigger number, R0, so four. And we're gonna subtract R2, which contains the value two from it. So let's see what happens. And let me clear out our registers once more. All right, so step over, four, two. Now we expect this to contain two because we're subtracting these two numbers. Yep, sure enough, it contains two. Perfect. All right, so we took a look at subtracting these values using registers as our operands. Here's the documentation also if you wanted to use an immediate value instead to subtract. But let's move on to an example of using the mall instruction. So this one actually only works on registers. There isn't an immediate option for this. So let's do this one more time just to demonstrate how this instruction works. I'm sure you've got the hang of it by now. Let's just put this in here. So we're going to multiply these two values together and then store this inside of our destination register. So this is going to be multiplying. Let's change our mnemonic mole. 
It's going to multiply the R0 with R2 and store that into R1. So let's just quickly show that happening. Compile and load. Step over. All right, let's reset our registers. And let's compile and load this one more time. And let's step over. We see four and two. And now we're expecting to see eight in R1. And there we go. Sure enough, we have the value eight. So let's go back to our code. I'm just going to refresh this since I have gotten rid of my bottom panel. Don't know how I did that. So now we took a look at all of our different instructions that we were adding to our repertoire, including our add, sub, and mull instructions for their immediate and register versions. So let's take a look at something uh -oh. called the current program status register and how we can use these same instructions to actually set it. If you look on the left hand side here in our registers, you see CPSR. That is the current program status register. And this holds many different values that represent the current state of the running program. If we go over to the documentation here, you can see the CPSR right here. This has a bunch of different flags inside of this special purpose register that represent a bunch of different things that might be happening in the program. To clarify what I mean by that, if we look at the value, these bits are set if any of their respective conditions occur. For example, if we add two registers together and the result is a negative value, then this bit inside of the CPSR register gets set to one or true. Also, if we use, for example, the sub instruction and the result is zero, then this Z bit gets set. So you get the kind of idea here. So same goes for carry and overflow. And I'll go into more detail about what exactly those are in a separate tutorial. But each bit in here represents a different flag that is set that is holding the different status of the program. So let's take a look at an example of how we can actually set this CPSR register and set one of the flags inside of this. If we go back to our documentation, remember this S, this S is very important because if you're just using the add instruction, this is not going to be setting the CPSR register. However, if you do add S and you add that, this will set the CPSR register based on the result of this particular instruction. The same thing goes for all of these different instructions that we were taking a look at. You see all of them have S options. So to understand exactly how this works, let's just take a look at an example. All right, so let's see how we can actually make the magic happen and set our CPSR register using some of the previous instructions that we learned. So I'm just going to set up a couple values here. We'll do move in, in the R0 register. Let's just put the number three. And let's do another one in R1. We'll also put the number three. And what we need to do here is we want to subtract these two from each other so that the result is zero, so that our zero st flag inside of our status register gets set. So this one right here, the zero bit, is going to get set. So what we need to do, we need to make sure we're going to use the sub S the S is very important or else this CPSR register flag is not going to get set. We'll put the result inside of the R2 register and then we'll do R0, R1. So we're going to subtract R1 from R0 and store the result inside of R2. So let's compile and load and see what happens here. So if you take a look at our CPSR register, you see the value is currently set to this and all of our leftmost um, numbers are set to zero. So let's go step over three, three, exactly what we expect. And then now we can see what happened. So the result got stuck in R2. It looks like nothing happened, but it actually stored zero inside of R2. 
And we see that this CPSR register is now containing a different value. So this is containing a six on the very left-hand side. So all of these bits here, R0 bit is going to be the bit 30 right here on the left-hand side. So that one got updated, but this is actually going to be four bits right here. And this is in hexadecimal, so it looks like it's not correct, but this is actually 32 bits in total. So in order to show you, I will show you in binary instead of looking at this in hexadecimal. So I'm gonna copy this right here. And let's do hex to binary. We'll just use rapid tables. So we have our hex number right here and we'll convert this. And now you can see that, let's say, for example, I take the zero right here. That was our original value. So on the left hand side, this would be all padded with zeros until we got up to 32 digits. But this is just showing you the ones that actually have values set to one. And then we had this was set to six in our new version. And this is 31 digits. So this is actually a total of 32 bits long. Since if you're looking at our register, this is actually 32 bits of data that is capable of being stored here. Each one of these is going to be four bits represented right here. So you see we have a total of eight of these four bit values. So eight times four is 32. So that's 32 in total of these digits that can store a zero or one. So to show you how this represents in our flags, I'm just gonna open up a new notepad plus plus here so we can show you. Let's paste that in. You can see we have 31 selected. So what we actually wanna do, what the actual value is, is pad a zero here on the left so that if we select this, you can see we've selected 32. So now let's go over to our flags and we'll pull up this value as reference. Let me zoom in and make sure you can see that. So this is the actual value in binary of this register. This is just the hexadecimal representation on the left-hand side. So this is gonna be setting the second bit over here to true and the third. So let's see what flags these are setting. So this is gonna be the second one right here at index 30, it's going to be the zero bit as well as the carry flag. So it set both of these to true. And CPU later is really nice in that when you set these flags, it actually highlights the value for you. So you can see the Z1 got set to true and the C also got set to true because they are uh, bold in black and not grayed out. If these were false, they would all be gray. So hopefully that makes sense and clarifies exactly how these status registered are, registers are stored and tracked and how they look in binary versus hexadecimal. So if we want to go back to all of our instructions, just make sure if you want the CPSR register to have its flag set based off of the result of this particular instruction, just add the S to that particular instruction. This goes for all of these different ones as well. So sub S right here, for example, which is what we used over here in CPU later. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this tutorial, we went over and added a few new instructions to our ARM assembly repertoire, including the add instruction, the sub instruction, and the mole instruction for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. We looked at the immediate and register options for the add and sub instructions, and then we took a look at what adding S to the mnemonic meant and how it could be used to set the CPSR or the current program status register that holds a bunch of different flag values about the current state of the program that we might need when referencing them inside of instructions. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. And you know what they say, I'm gonna hurt you And you know that it means so much And you don't even feel a thing